Welcome to How It Works, a video series from Law Sites and Law Next, in which you get to see hands-on demonstrations of legal tech products directly from the developer. Today, we're getting a first-hand look at Image Rights for Law Firms, a just-launched product from Image Rights International that provides image search and evidence acquisition for IP law firms and in-house counsel. Joining me to tell us all about it and show us how it works are Ted Van Cleve, founder and executive vice president, and Joe Naylor, founder, president, and CEO at Image Rights International. Welcome to both of you to How It Works. And Joe, let me start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Image Rights International and about this new product you're launching, Image Rights for Law Firms? Sure. And first of all, let me say thank you for having us, Bob. It's a real pleasure. So Ted and I first founded Image Rights back in 2009 to help with uh, artists and photographers who uh, were having their images, photos, and whatnot stolen online. And so we built a search technology specifically designed to help track down copyright infringements. And we built up services around that to help them pursue those claims and register their photos with the Copyright Office. And over the years, we developed uh, partnerships with scores of law firms in North America, Europe, and Australia, who also use the Image Rights platform in order to manage manage the cases uh, that are generated from our Image Rights service. And over the years, they've often asked if we could do a a specific search, maybe they're litigating a large case and they'd like more information on the other company and what images they may be using, or perhaps they have a, a client that uh, they'd like to run some searches for on their content. And so eventually we made the logical decision to productize a service uh, for IP attorneys. And that was the birth of this new uh, service that we're now launching, which is called Image Rights for Law Firms. So the core product had really been for creatives, but now you're launching this product focused on law firms and on protecting the rights of their creative clients. That's exactly right. So whereas historically we work directly with copyright holders and then we partnered with law firms to work with them, uh, here's an opportunity for the law firms or in-house counsel as well to utilize our platform directly and then actually uh, sign on their own clients through the platform uh, to manage their clients. Well, great. Well, let's turn to Ted and uh, see how it works. Ted, uh, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and show us uh, show us the product. Thank you, Bob. We'll get started here. I'll do a screen share. So we're excited to show you the uh, pretty amazing technology we have here and how robust our system is, but also how simple it is to use. I'm starting off on the home page, which is where everybody would start. The URL for Image Rights for Law Firms is imagerightsip.com. I'm going to go ahead and log in and get you started here. When you log in, uh, first off, you would set up an attorney account. That's the first thing that you would do and log in as an attorney. Then you can sign up uh, your clients beyond that. You can have one or two clients, or you could have hundreds of clients, unlimited really, if you want to. The first thing we're going to do is log in as a client. So this would be your account, and then you have clients who have photos or images or graphics that you want to track. What we'll do is we'll click on log in as the client, and this is a client that we choose. There, You could have, like I said, a number of them. When we log in here, the first thing we're going to look at is we have two things to do here. One on the left is images. That's how to upload them, how to upload the client images. And to the right of that are the sightings. So we make it as simple as possible for your client. You can have your client look in here if you give them permission, or you can not allow them in here. It's totally up to you if you give them permission or not. What you're seeing here on the left are the client images, and what you see on the right are the image matches. Now, for demonstration purposes, we also have a feature called larger icons in case you want to see more, see more up close here. And so we just make the icons larger. So as an example here on the left, this is the original image. This is the image that we found. Other information that we provide you are the original JPEG name, the original file name for the image that's on the far left, the client's image. When did we discover it? October 5th, 2021 in this particular case. Uh, Where it's displayed, in this particular case here, you click on the displayed, and what you'll see is the image on the website that we found. There are multiple images in this particular case. We also show where it's stored, and the difference is displayed is where the public can see it. Uh, The stored is uh, the URL 
where the company keeps it, the people who are using it, they store it there. And you can see that it's also available to view here, uh, but it's not open to the public. We provide you all, all this information. I'm going to show you some examples of some other sightings which are interesting here. We can find images even if they've been altered in some ways. They could have been cropped. They could have been reversed. You could re remove the color of them. And we can still find them for you. Here's a good example right here. This is the, my original image. This is the image on the right. You can see it's been cropped quite a bit, top and bottom. There's been a text overlay. I'm going to click on where that's displayed. And what we see is that it's displayed here on this site, Ryan Williams, who's an actor instructor. And if I scroll down a little bit, we'll see the image. And this is a good example that there's an overlay on the top and bottom. Uh, this image is actually, uh, this video is on YouTube. And this is a video. It shows you one of our capabilities. We can find videos. Not that we upload entire videos and search for entire videos. But most people who upload images, excuse me, videos, they have an opening screen image like this one does. And if somebody's infringing on it, if somebody steals your video, they don't change, they don't bother to change the opening screen. And so that's how we can also find videos besides still images. Ted, can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Where do the images that you're searching come from? Does the client go through and upload the images directly? Does the law firm do that? How, how do they get there in the first place? That's correct. So uh, the choice is the images have to be provided by the client. Uh, the client can upload them if the attorney gives them permission or the attorney could have staff upload them if they wanted to. The way you do that is you go to the left and it says images. Here we have sets of images that I've already uploaded. This is the Hollywood sign black and white as an example. And then we can see all of the images here. We can enlarge those if we want to. Click the back button. For your client to upload images, they hit Upload New Image Set. They just give that new image set a name and then click on Create the Image Set, and that allows them then to go through and upload images here. You can also add to image sets that you've already created if you want to. So these are the images that we have put in this demo account in different mm -hmm. folders. Thanks. Going back to sightings, I'd like to show you a couple more quick examples, and then we'll move on. So here's one that uh, this is a, an image on the right. It's been cropped just a little bit. When we click on where it was displayed, we'll see that it's a, a writer. And that as we scroll down, you'll see the image located here. We also then can click on this link. Now that we've clicked on this link and we can see that this is where the story is located and this is where the image is located. This image was actually located in 2021 because that's when we uploaded it to our system. But it's actually been on the internet since 2009, we can see here by the, by the byline of this story. Hmm. I'll show you a couple more examples. Here, unusual travels. When we click on this uh, picture of the Hollywood sign and where it's being used, we see that this is a, a site that's in Arabic. And this is what's interesting here. This is Cherish. This is an ad that's delivered to this site. And you can actually see the images here because these image prints that are mine are for sale on this site, Cherish, as a retailer. And so our site also, we picked that up and they're being advertised here. And then the site, the image is also being used further down on the site here. This same company is using them in China. Unusual travels, when I click on this link, it'll take us to the same site, but it's in Chinese. So that's how it works. The client generally then will go through. They'll find which ones are matches. If the match is an authorized use, they can click on uh, to the left over here and put it into a folder called authorized use and get it out of their inbox. Speaking of other folders, we have additional folders here where you might find some of the client images. When we put your images into the folders here in the inbox, the inbox are the best sightings we have. They're based on images that are by businesses, that are verified businesses in the US, North America, Canada, Mexico, and Europe primarily. We sort out other countries and put those into the outside the recovery area, although your law firm might do recoveries in uh, Russia or China or uh, South America, as an example. You can find those there. So we also have, besides the inbox, which are the best sightings, we have the folders where you can find additional sightings. And you can also create your own folders here for each client can have four additional folders. So as an example, the best thing to do is go through. If it's an infringement, we'll show you how to file a claim, then we'll move on. Let's say this LATaco.com is an infringement. They click this button to the left. 
What you'll see is it selects all of the images, or you could select just one or two of those. Down below, this pop-up window comes up and it says Submit a Claim. Or you can also move it into any of the other folders, authorized use, blogging platform, photo agencies, and so on. We're going to hit a Submit Claim, and that's it. That's all they have to do. We give it a case number, and we send this claim now to the attorney. So we'll go look at it, uh, claims. We're going to log out of the client side, and we're going to log into the attorney side now. Ted, as you're doing that, can you tell me, is this image search engine that you're using something proprietary to your company? Yes, everything we have here is proprietary to the company. So our search engines and crawlers, the AI that does all the sorting, everything top to bottom is our own that we've developed over the last 10 years working with our legal partners. As an example, we have over 1,500 crawlers operating at all times, 24-7, looking all over the world for images. We pull in 8 million images a day. We process them, analyze them, and put matches for our clients. We have 20 million images in our system that are our clients, and we find 96,000 matches per day for our clients. Wow. Impressive. Okay, and now we're going to log in as an attorney and show you the case folders. You log in as attorney. You just click your button there for your attorney account. I have multiple accounts here for the demo purposes, so we'll pick the law firm. And what we see now as the attorney is this is your account and these are your clients. These clients have a unique uh, login and notification and password that are provided to you at all times. You can also download those right here into an Excel spreadsheet if you want to share those with anybody. And you can upload your own logo in the upper left corner for your law firm. If you want to sign up a new client, you click register my client now and add a new client. That's how simple it is. Again, it's very, very robust, but we made this as simple as possible for you. We also give you free training top to bottom, whether it's you, an assistant, you're anybody you need to have a training on this, it's free of charge at all times. I'm clicking now on cases. Uh, this is the only thing you can do is look at cases over here, and then we're going to pick a case. And we've chosen a case, and then the only thing you want to do on these cases is look at the case folder on the far right. And what we've provided for you now is a case number. It has the folder with the case. It has the, the uh, customer's client's name. It has where they're stored, where I showed you already where they're stored, where they're displayed, the URLs. To the left of it, we have the original image, and then we have the screenshots. So this will show you the screenshots that we have. We provide you with a page screenshot and a full page screenshot. So just a screenshot that's of what's on the screen at the time, and then we also provide you with a full page screenshot. Those screenshots are time and date stamped, and because they're coming from us as a third party, they can be used in cases as evidence. And these are provided for you. You can share this with anybody, or you can just click the button, and you can save this as a case and send it to anybody as a written case if you want to. So, so courts will accept those as authenticated versions of, of these images and, and for purposes of evidence? We, you know, I believe that's happened in the past. I will say that it can be challenged at any time. And one of the things that I read recently is that law firms who provided their own screenshots were questioned uh, not only by opposing counsel, but by the, the judge also. And so if you have a third-party verification system, then it's, a much be it's much better for you to go in with that. Right, right. And so, Joe, did you have anything else you want to wrap up with it and, and uh, the system? Yeah, I just want to make comment to be clear that when your clients are using the system uh, and submitting the claims, uh, if, if you're having them do that directly, those claims are automatically uh, hand it off to your own firm and for your attorneys, whether it's you or if you have somebody on your team uh, that reviews and assesses the claims, and you can either uh, manage the case directly in the platform or simply do a one-click to download a case pack, as we call it, and then export it from our system, and then you can manage the case in your own case management platform if you prefer to do that. Thanks. And, and if a law firm uh, is interested in this, how, how do you price this? Is it a SaaS model? Is it by the user or something like that? Or, or how, how, would, how would they uh, go about that? Yeah, it's a yep. SaaS model. So basically, we have three pricing tiers. It's uh, $195 for up to 250 images. Um, and then we have different tiers going on up, $395 and $595 for up to $50,000. And then if uh, a given rights holder uh, has more than that, then we can discuss uh, what pricing may be. Uh, another aspect of the service uh, had success with over the years is finding uh, counterfeit or unauthorized products. 
And so we actually work with a number of companies and their in-house counsel. And so uh, another option is to uh, register uh, on the, instead of by client, by product or brand. So that's another option. Yeah, it's on a, a monthly basis. And the interesting thing for the law firms is how they uh, choose to pass on that cost to the client uh, is totally up to them. Uh, they could simply offer value add to say, hey, we do this for you as your law firm. And so it's a great recruiting tool uh, or they can pass it along as a, a monthly fee uh, or they could even just make it part of um, uh, when they settle the claim on their behalf, just to back out that cost as kind of like they would for a, a Pacer search or something like that. Great. Well, Joe and Ted, thanks so much. Uh, congratulations on the launch of Image Rights for Law Firms. It's been uh, really interesting seeing how it works, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Bob. Right. Thank you for having us. Uh, that's it for this episode of How It Works. You can find the full series at lawnext.com. This is Bob Ambrogi. Thanks for watching. <laughs>